first things first, this is my living room. Um, and this is where I film, where I work, uh, my whole setup. And I'm going to start off with the desk. So this is normally where I take all my photography, where I work, where I paint. Sometimes I'll paint over there, but mainly I work over here. Um, these are just ones which I still need to put up on eBay. I did the fabric design for these a few weeks ago. I need to put them up on eBay as well. So I've already framed these. I'm waiting for a frame for this guy to arrive. Um, I could have sent them by, well, just packed between cardboard, but I didn't really want to do that. I figured if someone buys it, I want it to be presented nicely, I want it to be wrapped up, I also want to know that it's going to be safe. I spent way too long painting these guys to, to have it bent in half, so instead what I've done is I've got frames, and I found these really nice frames that I liked. Um, I just thought that the texture worked really nicely and the contrast as well. These are a pain in the neck though to get centred. I must have moved this thing around six times and I still haven't managed to get it perfectly centered but I figured whoever buys these they might want to change the frame anyway and really I just once wanted something which was going to make the painting look good but then also protect it so I just had to ignore that really pedantic side of me and just leave it as it is. Um, but anyway this is where I work and this is also where I do my blog photos. What I do is that this is my work um, mat. What I really like about this one is I've abused it to death. It's got glue stains on it, art craft, um, knife cuts, all kinds of things. I mean, I've dropped super glue on this thing. I probably need to replace it, but it saved this desk a lot of abuse. Um, and then also if I'm doing any kind of photography, what I do is I have this little light here and then I just change it depending on where I want the light to be. Um, and I have these di different marble slates and that's what I'll use for product photography. I haven't done any blog posts with product photography for a while. I do need to get back into it, but back when I was regularly posting reviews on my blog, what I did is I just had a selection of little different marble sheets. And what I do is I store those marble sheets over here. So I have all these different marbles that I've collected. Some of them are just cutting boards. Those work as well. I think this one was a cutting board. Um, the green one was a cutting board as well. These are tiles and what you do if you go to a place like um, B&Q or Wix, um, especially if you find one that's broken, you can get it for a pound or two and they make really good backgrounds because then you can change the background depending on the product or the tutorial. This one was also a bathroom tile. Um, I have some paper, um, a mirror as well, slates. Um, these are cooking mats as well. This is just the easiest, cheapest way to get all these different backdrops. And this one, I must have done something with clay on it, so I still need to clean that. Um, and then this one, I also really like. I've used that one quite a lot. But then these are what I use for my backdrops. I also have a few different things over here. I have some fake sheepskin rugs, so I have a brown one, I have a white one. And then another good thing is wallpaper swatches. Again, this one I haven't used for a very long time, but it's very cheap. In some cases, it's even free to go to shops and take a few swatches. So I keep those. So I have this one, which is a very interesting, nice texture. And then I have this one, which is a lace texture. And that's another thing you can do for your blog photos. But anyway, back to the desk. And then what I do on my desk, over here I have just a collection of different things. The craft knife, pens, um, watercolour, um, brush, and then a little spray bottle. This is dead handy for when I'm using watercolours. This one is probably one of the laziest things I own. But if you want to texture something and you want to have um, flecks of paint, sprayed on something you just put the paint on here and then you turn it and because it has this little wire here what you can do is you can pull this down turn it and so then it will fleck the um the paper with little different flecks of paint and it is hands down the laziest thing that i own because uh, you could just use a toothbrush but um it was gimmicky and i was a sucker and i fell for it so i have that i also have a plastic rubber and this one I need to put in properly, it's a little bit loose. Um, but this thing is a lifesaver if I want to do any kind of highlights on hair for example. It's very good for just getting that really clean line um, really quickly as well because sometimes I've completely destroyed some of my pencil rubbers. Um, I really like rubbers which come in a pencil because then I've got a little bit more control, especially if I want to get rid of the colour somewhere in a very, very small amount. And sometimes when you have those massive rubbers, it's very easy to clear out a large area of paper, but you do tend to wreck the paper underneath. And sometimes you don't want something that's that broad. Um, so I really like this one for hair highlights. I also have a few Japanese uh, watercolour brushes. Um, this one I've mainly used for art, um, sorry not for art, for makeup lately, but 
sometimes I alternate and use them for both. A gold gel pen, it's really just a collection of different bits and bobs. So, and then in here what I do is I keep all my memory cards and normally what I do is I have this right next to my computer and when I've finished using a card and I've completely wiped it and it's clean I'll pop it in here so I know which ones are empty and which ones still have footage on them. So what I'll do is on this side, on the right hand side of my computer, this is the one with footage that still needs to be imported and this is the one where the footage has been imported and it's ready to use again. So I just keep them in an old tobacco tin. And then that is my work. And then over here what I have is I have my microphone. And this is the microphone, a condenser microphone that I use for my voiceover. I have headphones if I really want to pay attention to the background sounds. It can pick up car noises from outside, so sometimes I'll listen to the voiceover again and double check that something hasn't slipped its way in and you can't hear it in the background. It's a little pedantic, but I like things to be good quality. If I'm going to do something, I do it properly. So my microphone and my headphone. And this is actually my background, so it's balanced on top of the radiator. And then if any of you saw that old painting of the dragon that I did, this is it. He's just been covered with a black cotton, sorry it's not cotton, it's a um, muslin background. And then what I did is on the sides just to make sure that it was taunt, and some areas I can't get it completely taunt, which is really annoying. Um, I must have had this lying over something for quite a long time and it's completely bent the material. Um, but fortunately, because it's in the middle of the canvas, you can't really see that part anyway because I'm blocking it. But then what I do on the sides is I just have these pegs and I pull it as tightly as I can and I hold it into place. So I've got a few pegs there and there. And these kind of pegs, if you're ever doing anything with photography, they're just dead handy to have. So I have a few of these and I just use them to keep the canvas in place. And then what I do for background lighting is I just have this light from Aldi. Now, I normally have it plugged in just because it only lasts for about an hour or two and sometimes my makeup tutorials take longer to film. Um, so I always have it plugged in just in case. And then what you do is you just turn this thing on and it's ridiculously bright um, and it lights up the whole thing back there. And what it means is that I have this nice centre of light right behind me and it pulls the focus of the camera right to the middle of the screen. Now if I want to change the colour, what I do is I take these plastic films, I just hook it under there so it's not going to roll off, and fold it over and then it changes the light and you have more of an orange glow. Now I've layered this twice just because if you have one sheet it's not really enough, it's more of a yellowy glow more than an orange one. But then what I do is I have several different sheets of different colours. I have blue, red, yellow, orange, green, um, so I can change it depending on the tutorial that I'm working on, so it's incredibly handy. And this is a soft box that I used to use. The problem that I found with the soft box is that, well, it's a soft box, so the light is soft, and I needed something which was much harsher and was going to put a really defined circle of light right behind me, so I actually prefer this one. Um, but the soft box is still dead handy for other stuff. So I still keep it. You don't tend to get rid of soft boxes if you have them. They're just so useful. And over here we have the disaster. <laughs> that is my workspace. This is a collection of art stuff, um, studio stuff. And I'm going to start off with what I use for filming. So this is the tripod that I have. And what I'll do is I'll have my camera sitting here. And then here what I do is I just have a regular desk lamp. And if you're wondering why I have baking paper, it's because this is one of the easiest ways to create a soft box. Just get something like this, hook it over, don't let it touch the bowl because otherwise you will almost definitely burn a hole in it. But I just have baking paper over the lamp and then that way you still get that soft glow without having to shell out 40, 50, 60 quid for a soft box when this will do the same trick. You just get a good bulb, then you get the baking um, paper, you get a clip and then that's pretty much how you do it. Another thing that I do is I always have a second light. Now for the moment this one's on the floor. It isn't always on the floor. Normally what I'll do is I'll hook it on this basket so that I have a light which is facing me directly. And then I'll have this light which is hitting my face at a slight angle to create a little bit of butterfly lighting. It's not an incredibly harsh butterfly lighting look. Um, but I still really like what it does to your face. If you want to have lighting which is really flattering, get a light which isn't too harsh, you know, a little bit soft, which is at a slight angle, not too much, because if it's coming at you from too high, you're going to look a little bit freaky. If it's coming at you from too low, you're going to look like you have a torch under your chin. You need to have it at a slight angle. It's going to create a natural shadow under your chin. It's a really good way to just slim the whole face, make the neck look longer, make the face look slimmer. Um, and it's just the kind of lighting that I really like because it tends to be much more forgiving. 
Let's start off with the messiest corner. Now over here what I do is I have a stand and as you can see I have a mirror here that has some blue tack stuck on the back and this is one of the tricks that I'll do if I want to see what I'm doing but I don't want to be looking in the viewfinder is I'll just have this little mirror here, I'll have the camera over there and I'll try and look at the mirror and that way I can still see what I'm doing and I can normally move this pretty close to me before it become, gets into the frame of the camera. Um, and that way I can still see what I'm doing but I'm not looking in the viewfinder which I think is much better. I don't like looking in the viewfinder because otherwise it looks like you're admiring yourself all the time and that's just a little weird. So let's move over to here and yes I know it's a mess um, but it's organised chaos. What I normally do is anything that I buy on Amazon I save the boxes, I save the bubble wrap as well and I try and reuse it. It makes sense for me to save them and reuse them. I don't like chucking things that they're, if I can avoid it. I like to try and reuse stuff as much as possible. So I have a few boxes, um, these are going to be for some jar DIYs that I'm going to be doing and then I'm going to be selling those as well. But then down here what I have is I have my makeup, I also store all my bubble wrap here as well. I also have a little piece of card that comes out here and it's just um, an old parcel which I cut up, a cardboard parcel and it folds out. And if I need to spray paint anything I'll spray paint it on that card so that it doesn't end up um, on the carpet because I do have to spray it indoors, I don't have a garden unfortunately. Um, so I do that, I spray it on the card and then I open the windows, let some air get around here and that way I don't get any spray paint on me or on the carpet and it just controls where the paint goes. But in here I keep all my bubble wrap so I can see where it is. Here is where I keep a makeup drawer and then over here is where I keep bits and bobs. To be honest this one is mainly for art stuff so today we're just going to focus on this. Actually I'm just going to take this drawer out before the whole thing collapses. Right. I have some Ben Nye Super White Powder. I have a primer, the Elf Mineral Primer, and this one is very, very good. So I have the Elf Mineral Primer. I have the, hang on, what one is this called? BRTC BB Cream, and I like this one because it's very heavy coverage BB Cream. I haven't had to use it often, but when I do need it, it's an absolute godsend. And this one, you've all seen me use a hundred times. I think this is the second one I've gone through. It's the Claire's BB Cream. This one is one that I mainly use on jobs. I don't tend to use many bases on myself, but this one is the Invisible Matte Plus SPF. I can't remember what SPF it actually had in it, so I'll need to check. I always end up having to check what the SPF is every time I use this, just so that I know, because obviously if you're gonna be using flash photography, you don't really wanna use something with SPF, but this one is flipping good. Then another two that I have, and these, And then another two that I have are the Krylon colours, and this one is the colour TV White. And then this is my colour, which is, I think it's Abelaster. Um, and they're both really, really good. I still prefer BB creams. I prefer the way they make my skin look, the way they make my skin feel. But if I need something which is a bit more heavy coverage, but not that heavy, thick cream coverage, then I'll use these. And also what I really like with these is that I can mix them with my moisturiser and they mix very, very well and they can still give me enough coverage but then not be as heavy as if I just use them pure on my skin. Um, these are also some foundations that I really, really like. I won a competition with El Masca a while ago and what they did is they gave me, I was allowed to pick a few of my favourite items, so I picked these to add to my kit. I had the, picked the darkest colour they had. I picked a colour which was more or less a mid-tone. They've got that kind of BB type feel, um, and I really like having these in my kit. Ideally, I would like to have two more in between these two shades, just to give me more variety. If I had a bit more variety between these two shades, I can pretty much mix it to match it to exactly the skin tone of whoever I'm working on. For the moment I just have these three but they're still very very useful shades to have on a shoot. This is another primer that I really like and that's the Krylon Under Base and I can't remember if this one has SPF. Yes, SPF 15. Um, also a very very good base. This is the Illamasqua White Foundation and this one is a pure pure white. It's not the same colour white as this one. This one's more of an off creamy white and this one is surgical coloured white. So I prefer this one if I'm going for more of a very harsh Tim Burton-esque um, pure white colour. And then I like this one if I'm going for something which is a little bit more soft and gothic-y and not completely dead ashen black and white movie type white. Over here I have a few more palettes that I use for jobs. I have some of the Ben Nye creams. These are fantastic. I actually prefer them to the Graftobia creams. Um, these are some that I've used quite a lot. 
um, I can't remember the name of this one, yes, Graftobian Glamour Cream, but to be honest, I prefer the formulation of these, they feel lighter, and they're also ridiculously pigmented, and there's just something about them that I like. What I've noticed with these is that they do tend to cling to any kind of dry patches. These I haven't noticed that problem quite so much, but it probably depends from person to person. Over here I have some Chunky Cheeks, um, I think these are cream blushes and they are very very good. I don't know why my hands are shaking so much today. Um, and these are very very nice cream blushes. I have these two which I keep in this kit and then I have one which I keep in my personal kit. Over here I have different creams, so I have this colour from Graftobian, uh, which one? this one as well, and that one too. I think these are cream, high def glamour cream, yeah those are cream, they're not grease paint. I know I have some grease paints somewhere, but again, these are also some Graftobian colours. And then the Skin79 BB Cream, which is almost completely finished, but I do need to use it up. And then another Skin79 BB Cream. And if you've been watching me for a while, you've seen me use these two a lot, so you're not going to be completely unfamiliar with them. The one below is just an empty drawer. And then in here, I just keep all my full slashes. I try and just have one drawer for each thing, just because otherwise there's more makeup than you could possibly ever use. And I don't like having things sitting in drawers, which I know I'm not going to use. It really annoys me. Just the waste drives me insane. Um, so I try and just only have a drawer for each thing. And even then, I'm really trying to cut down on them. What I'm going to try and do at some point is have something like a 30-day challenge, where I challenge myself to use up the things which I know I don't use very much. Um, just to try and use them up and do looks which would push me outside of my comfort zone. This is where I keep all my false lashes and lash accessories. If I'm doing a shoot, what I'll do is I'll bring these little disposable spoolie brushes. I don't like using my own spoolie brushes just because you can clean them, but the thing is after a while they do end up looking a little bit worn. And just to be safe, I'd rather use a different spoolie brush on each person that I'm working on and not risk giving them an eye infection because even if you keep your makeup clean and your brushes clean, there's just, there's always that risk, and especially if you're working with a model whose livelihood is their face, you've got to take care of it. So I always try and use disposable spoolie brushes. And then I have lashes in a box, and I got these at iMats, I think it was about two years ago, um, and they are fantastic little eyelash kits. I haven't used this one as much as I've used this one. I think this is the one that I've used the most. No, it's not, it's the one underneath. Now oh, there we go. <laughs> So you can see I've used a few sets from here and I'm pretty sure that I've also used the sets under there as well. Um, but I have a few different from this brand. So I've got these which are a little bit thinner, these which are just thicker all over. And then I have this one which is mainly focused on the center. And I have a few extreme lashes over here. I have some of the sugar pill ones which are always guaranteed to be crazy. And then I have my favorite false lashes and these are the wispy ones. Um, just anything which looks just wispy and almost spider leggy um, I really like and I've used this in a lot of my videos I think I use this one an awful lot in my seven deadly sin series but I need to get back into using them again but I was worried that you would you guys were getting sick of seeing me wearing these so I stopped wearing them for a while but I think I'm gonna get back into it in here we have all my hair stuff which to be honest I don't use very much I mainly use wigs so I have a hair straightener which has probably been used twice in my whole life I really can't stand straightening my hair but sometimes for certain makeup tutorials you need to so I always keep it on hand and to be honest I use it more for art stuff than I do for my hair I have a lifetime supply of hair pins I also have a few hair gems as well these little hair clips which I adore they're my favorites and this which I need to use to create some um, some tutorials with at some point and this is one that I use for my own hair just on a day to day basis. Another empty drawer. And then down here I just keep bits and bobs. I have some plaster, this is some of the string that I use to tie up any of the paintings that I sell. Normally when I'm selling any of my props or my paintings what I'll do is I'll wrap them up in black tissue, I'll wrap the twine around it and then I'll put a little red wax seal right in the middle to hold everything in place and that way it just looks really nice and presentable and it's just that extra little detail for anyone who's bought it. I just, I really love packaging things and making them look nice so it's one of those extra little details that I like to do with anything that I've sold. 
I also have some disposable makeup sponges, but again, I mainly use these for art and not for makeup. I don't like the edge that these leave if you're using them to apply foundation. I also have some garden wire. These things are really useful for creating horns and then also for creating a wire base for anything that you're trying to make, like a crown or even armour or horns, things like that. This I have is a little spray nozzle and I really like this because what you do is you get something like a pro marker or a felt tip pen you pop it in here so that the nib is right against this and then just by pressing that it sprays that color onto whatever surface you want and it's really good for texturing things. I have an orc latex mask which I still haven't used. I have a bald cap back here as well. I have some polymorph and I can't remember if I've used this in a tutorial. I think I used it in my eyeball jar tutorial but I need to use it for a few crowns in future. Um, and this stuff is dead handy, so I always try and have a, a good supply of this on hand. Because when you need it, you need it in bulk. I also have a little collection of feathers, which I'm hoping to use for a feather crown at some point. Some staples down there as well, which I just keep in a jar. And yeah, that's just my, uh, my bits and bobs drawer. Before I forget, up here I also keep all my different latex. So I have a few different latex. Um, this... All of these are rubber latex, cosmetic grade. I also have my art roll back here, but I'll show this in my separate art video. I don't really want to start jumping all over the place. I'll just try and keep this video exclusively to my studio setup and to makeup. But this is my art roll. And then back here, I also keep a few different latex bottles. Here I have some backup bulbs for my cameras, um, sorry not for my cameras, for my lighting. Um, I haven't had many problems with the bulbs breaking on my soft boxes, but the thing is when they go, they tend to go in twos. Every time I've had one of my soft boxes break, normally the other one will break shortly afterwards. I don't know if they've got some kind of suicide pact going on, but they always tend to die at the same time. So I have two bulbs backed up at any given time, just in case. Here I have some seashells, which are for a few DIY projects. I guess this is studio stuff, but this is stuff that I use for props for backgrounds on my videos. Not on my videos, on my blog. So on my blog, if I'm ever doing a review, and especially if I'm photographing organic products, I like to use hay in the backdrop. I also keep straw, and I like to keep them in these little bags so it doesn't become really messy. I keep things like petals, which I've dried, um, dried flowers as well. When I was in a band with Sarah and we were filming our own music videos originally just because we wanted to have fun and experiment and try and teach ourselves a few things. Um, this is the camera that I use, not the camera, the camera frame that I use to hold my camera and to film things. And then back here I have my fog machine, which I love because the photography that you get when you use a fog machine is amazing, but oh, I hate how that thing smells. Um, and I always keep some backup fluid of that as well because it does go through quite a, quite a lot of fluid, but um, yeah. That's the fog machine that I use for any of my cool photos, so for anything like the Wraith, I think the Wraith look was the one that I did the most recently, and that is the fog machine that I used for it. Since most of the rest of this is art stuff, I'm just going to save that for my other art video, and I'm just going to move on to what I actually use in my studio. This is my wig basket, and I keep all my wigs in here. Most of them I either keep in a wig cap to keep them safe, or I keep them wrapped up in these little bags. Um, some of them I'll keep loose like this. Um, I think these are some hair extensions, but I need to wait for my hair to get a little bit longer before I can wear that. So I keep all my wigs in here. In general, my rule is if it doesn't fit in this, I have too many and I need to get rid of one. Um, so normally what I'll do is I have a lot of friends or friends who have younger siblings who really like wigs. So whenever I have one too many, I just let them pick out which one. Um, and recently I got rid of my Merida wig just because I was never going to use that. Um, and my little sister was absolutely in love with it. So yeah, that is my wig drawer, well, basket type thing, and they just about fit in there. And down here what I have is I have also props. These I use for my product photography and I also use for my video photography, so I just keep things like flowers, feathers, hay, um, I think there's a feather boa back there as well, um, and then some of them, for example this pink tissue. I just keep in these clear plastic bags and I really like having clear plastic bags just because then I can see exactly what I have and I don't like keeping things which I use regularly in drawers just because you forget that you have them and then sometimes you end up with duplicates and it's just much easier to have them in a clear plastic bag so you can see exactly what you have. So that's what I keep in there. Down here I keep various little props so I keep this necklace which I'm hoping to use for a King Tutankhamun or maybe Nefertiti, I'm not sure. 
um, but I need to age it and weather it a little bit more. I have my steampunk goggle, I have a necklace that I made a while ago, I basically took three River Island necklaces and butchered them and put them together. Various necklaces, earrings, um, headbands, basically anything which I think is going to be useful for creating a character or a look. This is also for product photography, so I keep things like black sand, and this one's fake snow, more sand, stones back there as well, coffee beans, um, more fake stones, so I keep some black stones somewhere, some gold sand, white stones, and then here I keep sand as well, and it's just really useful for product photography, which I really need to get back into, but um, yeah, it's odd the little things that you end up keeping for product photography, but it makes a real difference just to keep little textured things like this. In here, and these don't stick very well to the basket, but in here I keep straw and feather boas, and then also some fake webbing. I've used the fake webbing in a few of my videos. If you've seen my Miss Muppet video, that's what I've used. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Straw, feather boas, and fake webs. This one's a little bit interesting because it's a mishmash of things. Here I have some lighting, and this one's a blue light. Um, and you just do that and as you can see the light is blue but then another thing that I have is I have a bulb here which connects to this little beauty over here so I just plug that in to a plug and then I'll hold that wherever I need it to create a good interesting light effect if I need more of a rounded shape for the bulb so that I can have it and hold it in my hands and make it look like my hands are glowing then I will use a different bulb which I have somewhere further down there but then this is the one that I use for my steampunk look I have another bulb which is rounder and shorter which also fits into this which I use for my hope tutorial and the combination of these three things is how I get that interesting lighting in my photos and they're just an absolute lifesaver it's amazing what you can do photography wise just with a bulb it really does make your photos look so much more interesting when you can play around with the light sources I also have some fairy lights back here which to be honest I'm probably gonna get rid of sometime soon I can't really see myself using them again but we will see I will keep using them I also have an airbrush machine back there as well and this is really just a collection of bits and bobs um, that I use for my videos so cables light bulbs all that good stuff I keep in here